Now, Roma Wines, R-O-M-A, made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. Roma Wines present Suspense. Tonight, Roma Wines bring you Miss Claire Trevor in The Plan, a suspense play produced, edited, and directed for Roma Wines by William Spear. Suspense, radio's outstanding theater of thrills, is presented for your enjoyment by Roma Wines. That's R-O-M-A, Roma Wines. Those excellent California wines that can add so much pleasantness to the way you live, to your happiness in entertaining guests, to your enjoyment of everyday meals. Yes, right now a glass full would be very pleasant as Roma Wines bring you Claire Trevor in a remarkable tale of... Suspense! I, uh, I know this has been a terrible shock to you, Mrs. Anderson, but there's a few questions we have to ask you. You understand why that can't wait. My husband, where is he? I'm so worried about him. We uh, just located him through the sheriff's office, Mrs. Anderson. They're bringing him over. Is he all right? He's more worried about you than you are about him. Have they told him what happened? Did they have to, Mrs. Anderson? Well, they don't think he did it, do they? Well, they mustn't think that. We don't know quite what to think. I uh, suppose there's no doubt about the cause of death, is there, Doc? No doubt whatsoever. This is the gun that was used. Mm Mm-hmm. You recognize this gun, Mrs. Anderson? Yes. It's a dueling pistol. One of a brace that belongs over the fireplace in the trophy room. Funny they're being loaded. There was a reason for it. Ah? Well, do you mind telling me what the reason was? I'd better start at the beginning. Yeah, I think you'd better. Well... Harvey, my husband and I have only been married a short time, as you probably know. Yeah, in a town this size, you can't help knowing most of the vital statistics. Especially about old Judge Collins' daughter, eh, Lieutenant? Yeah, Doc. As uh, I remember, folks here about didn't know much about Mr. Anderson. No, and neither did I. All I know was that he was good and kind. And I felt so alone after my father's death. Oh, I know what you're thinking, but Harvey didn't kill that man. I, I know that. Oh, I wish he were here. I feel so helpless facing this alone. You're among friends, my dear. Yes. You're so very kind, Doctor. And you too, Lieutenant. It's it's just that, well, if they question Harvey, he, he might say anything trying to protect me. You sure you aren't trying to protect him, Mrs. Anderson? I told you. I, I'll have to start at the beginning. It was only last night that the phone call came... Harvey and I were sleeping here in this bedroom. At first, I couldn't imagine what had happened at call at that hour. One moment. Yes? Pittsburgh calling Mr. Harvey Anderson. Oh, this is she. Mr. Harvey Anderson. Oh, Mr. Anderson. What is it, Helen? Uh, one moment. <sighs> Harvey, it's a, a long-distance call from Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh? Yes, yeah, so late. Do we know anybody in Pittsburgh? Uh, here, give me the phone. Hello? Yes, all right, operator. I can't imagine who... Hello? Yes? Al! Oh, how are you? Yes, well, what are you doing in Pittsburgh? Who's Al, Harvey? Yes? Oh, no, no, Al. Tomorrow, no. Well, very well. Tomorrow. Well, now, who's Al, and who does he think he is calling us up at 3 o'clock in the morning? What's wrong, Harvey? Bad news? Who's Al? My brother. Brother? My brother. Harvey, I never knew you had a... You, you well, never told me. The Lord said me. unto Cain, where is thy brother? And Cain said, I know not. Am I my brother's keeper? It makes sense, And the Lord darling. answered, the blood of thy brother crieth up to me from the ground. Yes, and Eve probably took after him with a, a fig tree rolling pin. I'm not being facetious, Helen. I don't know how to explain it. Something... It's just not easy to speak about it. Well, obviously. No, it's not a joke. But what... I... I'll show you. 
It'll be easier that way than talking about it. Well, where are you going? To get the papers. What papers? The papers that explain about my brother. They're locked in the safe in the trophy room. He wasn't out of the room very long, but it seemed an eternity. I sat up in bed and lit a cigarette. I was wide awake now. I was worried. I'd never seen that look on Harvey's face before. He came back with a sheaf of papers in his hand and, without a word, handed them to me to read. There was a good deal of legal language I didn't bother to wade through. The important thing was the signatures and the official stamps. They were commitment papers on Alan H. Anderson, signed by his brother, a board of alienists, and the warden of the state hospital for the criminal insane. Do you understand what those papers mean? Yes. Yes, I do, Harvey. Oh, my poor, poor darling. No, no, you mustn't take that view of it. I can speak of it now as if it had happened to another person not even related to me. I would prefer to do that if we're going to discuss it. How long he since... He escaped you... four years ago. And is he still... He was never violent all the time, just that once. He killed a woman, <gasps> his wife. You can see, Helen, why you never knew I had a brother. Criminal insanity in one's immediate family is pleasant neither to reflect on nor to discuss. I suppose I shouldn't have played along with him as long as I have. How do you mean, dear? I had a good deal of money four years ago at the time of the escape, and Brother Al's had every cent of it. He promised I'd never hear from him again, but I guess blackmail gets into the blood. What are we going to do? Do? I don't want a man like that in my house. Helen, do you mean that you'll stick by me even... Darling, I love you. I see no reason why you should suffer for this dreadful thing. You had no control over it, and it's, it's all over and done now. You're the man I love, and I'm not going Thanks, to... Thanks, darling. You're wonderfully understanding. But Alan Anderson is an escaped criminal. We must act accordingly. Your... your brother. He, he's coming here. He'll be in on the six o'clock train. I'll meet him at the station. Harvey, do you think you Leave this to... thing to me, Helen. You have nothing to do with it. Now turn out the light, darling. We'd better get some sleep. <sighs> Harvey... What was it like? I can remember how it came on. It was horrible. Horrible. I'd almost forgotten about it until Al called just now. What about his wife? The one Beverly? He... She made a fatal mistake, and I share the blame. We underestimated the seriousness of the attacks Beverly paid with her life for our joint error of judgment. It seems a long time ago now. <laughs> Brother Al... Strange how two people can grow up together, look alike, even think alike, until one day something happens to one of them, and it's as if they'd never known each other. What's he like, Harvey? Huh? Oh, very like me. You'll know we're brothers when you see him. Oh, darling, what's the use? Maybe I'd better go to the authorities before he gets here and... No, I won't hear of it. You've suffered enough. Darling, I can't tell you how wonderful you are. It doesn't make any difference. You're sure you aren't frightened? We'll be at the station at 5.30 tomorrow and, and do what has to be done. Now go to sleep, darling. Go to sleep. I suppose if you want really to forget something, you can. And even the direct stirrings of premonition can be subdued by a good hard day of housework. I was helping Matilda, and for some reason I worked with even more concentration and good spirits than usual. But somehow, the doorbell intruded on that concentration, disturbed the protective veil for a moment, I guess. I seldom used the door slot, but now I did. I felt silly peeking out. Hello, ma'am. Oh, why, hello, Rutherford. Matilda, it's Rutherford. <laughs> Excuse me, coming around the front, ma'am. Tried knocking on the back, but nobody answered. Oh, that's all right, Rutherford. Matilda was running the vacuum for me. We didn't hear. You're early, aren't you? It's only 2.30. Oh, I told Tilda to expect me at 3, because I figured the train would be late and done if we didn't come in on time. Oh, <laughs> well, Matilda will be right out. Oh, I like Tilda, Miss Anson. It's mighty nice of you to give it the afternoon off when my run makes town in the daytime. Eh? <laughs> well, it's not often, Rutherford. I don't mind. 
You must be tired. Your Pullmans are awfully crowded these days, aren't they? Oh, yes, ma'am. Oh, yeah, I know what I want to tell you. I saw a man riding on the Belforte. It's not my car. I was just passing through. <laughs> Lordy, ma'am, he looked just like your husband. Before I saw it wasn't, I said, hello, Mr. Anderson. He said, hello. And I said, you ain't Mr. Anderson. And he said, I am. Lord, ma'am, he looked near enough like Mr. Anderson to be his brother. His brother. Spitting image. I think it might have been his brother, Rutherford. You don't see. Hello, you. <laughs> ready, Tilly? I'm ready. Come along. Bye, Miss Anderson. Bye, Miss Anderson. Oh, goodbye. Uh, Rutherford, uh, did you say this man came in with you uh, on the 2.30? Huh? Oh, yes, yeah, sir. He's here in town, then. Something wrong, ma'am? Uh, no, I... You come in there, man. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, well, goodbye, Miss Anderson. Bye. The 2.30. <gasps> Matilda! Matilda! Oh. 2.30. Harvey's brother, Al, had come in on the 2.30. At all costs, I must not be alone in the house when he arrived. And here he'd be arriving in three hours before we were ready for him. At any moment now, I bolted the door, picked up the phone, and started to dial the number of Harvey's office. My hands were shaking so that I fumbled the dial and had to start again. Novelties, good afternoon. Hello, uh, hello, Pearl. This is Helen Anderson. Is Mr. Anderson there? I'll ring his office. He don't answer, honey. I guess he didn't get back from lunch yet. At three o'clock? Oh, don't be silly. Try him again. Well, honey, he's not in there, but death. I'll tell him you call. Uh, well, look, uh, connect me with Mr. Gutherford's office. It's important. All right, just a sec. Yes? Oh, Ralph, is Harvey there? Oh, Helen. Why, uh, no, I haven't seen him since lunch. Uh, well, look, Ralph, the minute he gets in or you hear from him, tell him to call home at once. It's important. Sure, Helen. Anything I can do? Oh, uh, no, Ralph, thanks. It's a, just a family matter. Well, if I see him, I'll tell him. Oh, Ralph, on second thought, I'd better tell you what it is. I... Hello? Hello, are you still on the line? Hello? <laughs> doorbell. It stabbed the air of the quiet house like a knife blade. I meant not to answer it, but something made me walk over to the door and open the slot. Curiosity, I suppose, or perhaps something stronger than mere curiosity. Yes. Is uh, this the Anderson residence? Yes. Mrs. Anderson? Yes. Mrs. Anderson, I was given your name by Mrs. Colby down the street. She said you might be interested in our special offer. Now, for only 30 cents a week, uh, or a little over four cents a day, uh, you can subscribe to any two magazines at their regular subscription rate. Uh, and this beautiful dictionary, 1,200 pages, 127,000 uh, words, oh, 400 yes, yes, I am interested. Huh? I am interested. Is there something wrong? Uh, uh, no, I, uh, I... <laughs> well, uh, frankly, ma'am, I, I lost my place in my speech. Oh. You see, I'm accustomed to a little more sales resistance. Well, there are several magazines I've wanted. Well, to tell you the truth, Mrs. Anderson, it's no bargain. Oh, please, now, I'd, I'd much rather be deceived, you see. Oh, well, looks like competition coming through the gate. Uh, pardon me, is this 2367 Oakhurst? Yes. Oh, you're Helen, aren't you? Well, I'm Al Anderson, Harvey's brother. Well, I guess I, I'd better be going. Oh, no. Oh, that's all right. I can stop back. No, but, but the magazine... Oh, I cover the same territory tomorrow. Well, goodbye, ma'am. Uh, pardon me, sir. So, you're my brother Harvey's wife, eh? Yes, I... Didn't Harvey tell you I was coming? Oh, yes, he did. I... I I'm glad to meet you. Well, aren't you going to invite me in? Oh, yes. Yes. Come in. Oh. 
For suspense, Roma Wines are bringing you Claire Trevor in The Plan by Cyril Enfield. Roma Wines' presentation tonight in radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. Between the acts of suspense, this is Truman Bradley for Roma Wines with an entertaining suggestion for the ladies. Next time you play hostess to club friends, solve the problem of what to serve by offering delicious Roma California sherry. Wherever smart women gather, at bridge luncheons, at club meetings, at showers for the bride, you'll notice Roma sherry being served. It's proof that delightful Roma sherry is the favorite wine with party-wise hostesses coast to coast. If you haven't tried golden amber Roma sherry lately, you've a treat in store. I know you'll enjoy as much as I do the mellow fragrance, delicious medium sweetness, and satisfying nut-like taste of Roma sherry. And take it from me, serving Roma sherry is simplicity itself. You just pour and hospitality reigns. Men and women alike tell me Roma Sherry is their round-the-clock favorite. Perfect first call for dinner. Keynote of friendly hospitality any time. No wonder Roma wine is America's first choice. Yet Roma costs no more than ordinary wines. So get Roma Sherry tomorrow. That's R-O-M-A, Roma wine. Remember, more Americans enjoy Roma than any other wine. And now, Roma Wines bring back to our Hollywood soundstage Claire Trevor as Helen Anderson in The Plan, a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. Would you like some water, Mrs. Anderson? Oh, thank you. If you'd rather rest... Uh... No, I'll go on. I I led him into the front hall, and as he walked behind me to the living room, I, I can't tell you, it was as if I had my back turned on death. Just reaching the front room took a lifetime. We sat facing each other, and I, I tried to answer his questions, but I, I didn't seem to be able to talk... It was a terrible self-feeding panic, and I watched myself provoke the very situation I wanted to avoid. Because he grew more and more restless as I failed to answer him with grace or sense, I saw the corners of his mouth start working, his jaw and fingers tense. I told him I'd phone Harvey, and I fled out to the hall and up the stairs to the second floor. There was a phone in Father's old trophy room. We used it for a den. I called Pearl, Harvey's secretary, but the line was busy. Then I saw the brace of dueling pistols... I think I decided then that I'd protect myself in any way that I could. I took the ammunition from the case, loaded the pistols, and put them on the mantel. Then the perfectly simple solution of leaving the house by the back way came to me. Uh Uh-huh. I might be able to find Harvey and bring him back before... Yeah, I was going to ask why you... If I had only thought of it sooner. Of course, I had to get downstairs first, past the archway that opened on the living room where he sat. I walked out into the corridor... Just over to the head of the stairway, I told myself softly. Down the steps and around and out through the back. Ellen! Ellen! I pulled back from the head of the staircase just as he appeared at the bottom. Ellen! You up there? I ran back along the hallway into the trophy room and shut the door behind me. I heard his footsteps coming upward. Ellen! Ellen! I heard him opening doors along the hallway. First he'd knock, then open the front bedroom. The guest bedroom... The second floor sitting room. And then... Helen? I was afraid to answer. And afraid not to answer. If he came into that room, I was afraid that... Helen! Yes? I'm sorry. I wondered where you were. You didn't come back to the drawing room. May I come in? Oh, yes. I... I haven't been able to reach Harvey. I've been trying everywhere. Oh, yes. My brother... My beloved brother. We must reach him by all means. Oh, I've tried. Forget it. Uh, this room is a lot cozier than the front room. Couldn't we talk here? If you wish. The front room's too big. 
don't like such big places. Do you? Uh, I... I like cozy places. Cozy people, too. Trouble is, there's too many people who aren't cozy. Cut your throat. Law of the jungle. Yes. This is a nice room. It's a nice house. Is it yours? Yes, uh, that is my father's, really. I... I inherited it. (laughs) What are you laughing at? (laughs) These trophies. These stuffed heads. (laughs) I thought for a moment Harvey had gone in for the out-of-doors life. (laughs) These are your father's, then? Yes. (laughs) That wolf's head. What savage teeth you have, said Little Red Riding Hood. Oh, look here. (gasps) Don't touch those. I beg your pardon? Those guns are are loaded. Loaded? Do you always keep loaded guns in your house? Do you think it's safe? Oh, please, please put them down. Old dueling pistols. (laughs) How beautiful. (laughs) How many men died at sunrise because another man cocked the hammer and squeezed the trigger? Oh, don't! (laughs) Oh, don't worry. I know how to handle a gun. Yeah. Feel better? You you must forgive me. I I have a headache, a terrible headache. I'm I'm all on edge. Oh, do you have headaches too? Yes, I. Well, so do I. Terrible oh, ones. Oh, y- you do. So terribly painful. Sometimes they say. Seem... <gasps> what do you want? What do I want? A cigarette. Here, I'll get it. No, you. no, sit there. I'll get it. Well, thank you. A match. <laughs> What's wrong with you? What do you want from me? I broke your lamp. I'll pay for it. What are you crying about? Stay away from me. Oh, you're like all the others. Stay away. Come here. What are you afraid of? Stay away. Come here. Do you hear me? Take it easy, Mrs. Anderson. I must have stood there screaming, just screaming, looking at him. Then I, I, I just stood quiet, and, and then you people came. Hmm. Well, I'm sorry, Mrs. Anderson. Shucks, I, I'm terribly sorry. <laughs> yeah, just a second. You, Lieutenant. Huh? Oh, thanks. Hello? Yeah. Oh, you did? Fine. What else? You uh, checked it with Doctor Who? Uh-huh. Well, is, uh, is he the chief of staff there? Well, well, that's good enough for me. Anything else? No, no, no. Hold everything there. Well, Mrs. Anderson, the identification of the body was checked through by telephone with State Hospital... Yes, yeah, sure enough, the papers on him belong to an Alan Anderson who's been a fugitive from the state for the past four years. <laughs> oh, shucks, Mrs. Anderson, don't cry like that. Okay, then I gotta do it anyhow. You're, uh, You're under arrest, Mrs. Anderson, on suspicion of murder. M- murder? Now, nah, now, nah, don't go off again. I, I won't. Shucks, Mrs. Anderson, I hate to do it. Why, your dad and me was real close friends. He, uh... How did... How did you know? Oh, it was just lucky. I mean, you did a real job of storytelling, Mrs. Anderson. Real fine. Never told a single lie. I... I thought... I know. You thought when we found him dead with your husband's old identification on him that your husband would be free finally and forever. Well, I wish it worked out that way, Helen, for your dad's sake. You... You know everything. Yeah. Yeah, your husband was the real Alan Anderson. Alan H. for Harvey Anderson. Six years ago, he murdered his first wife and beat the rap on an insanity plea. When he escaped, he came to our nice little town in Pennsylvania, married our favorite and most respectable daughter after a whirlwind courtship. I guess she didn't find out much about him. I'm sorry, Mrs. Anderson. I really am. You needn't be, Lieutenant. 
If Harvey's going to be taken away, I don't care what happens to me. It was a good plan, though. <laughs> yes, sir, I'll have to hand it to you. You could have pleaded self-defense against an escaped lunatic. Brother Albert looked enough like your husband. You and he would identify the dead man, and we'd wire the authorities out west that they could close their books on the fugitive. Uh, that was the plan, wasn't it, Mrs. Anderson? Yes, that was the plan. But, but how? How did you know? Well, I guess it was the strain. Strain? On your husband. I guess it was a relapse. You see, when we picked him up on Elm Street, stark, staring, babbling everything... Oh, no. Oh, I'm sorry, Mrs. Anderson. Shucks, I, I really am. But, but I didn't do it to avoid a scandal. I want that understood. I love him. I don't care what he is. I'm just sorry this business has made him ill again. That wasn't a part of the plan. Yeah, I guess there's always something missing in a plan for murder. I wouldn't know. You see, Lieutenant, this is my first experience of this sort of thing. Mm. Ah. Well, Mrs. Anderson, are you ready to go? Yes, I'm quite ready. Poor Harvey. Poor... Poor darling. Suspense. Presented by Roma Wines. R-O-M-A. Made in California for enjoyment throughout the world. Before we hear again from Claire Trevor, star of The Plan, tonight's suspense play, this is Truman Bradley for Roma Wines. Recently, I dined with a friend who hadn't yet discovered the magic of Roma wine with meals. We decided on thick, juicy hamburger steaks. To bring out the fullest flavor of the red meat, I ordered Red Roma California Burgundy. Well, my friend's face lighted up at the first sip of that good Roma Burgundy. Roma Burgundy, he said, made every bite of hamburger tastier, more flavorful, and he vowed Roma Burgundy would be adding taste enjoyment to his meals from then on. Yes, Roma Burgundy adds tantalizing taste appeal to any meal. Prove it yourself. Tomorrow, serve delicious Roma Burgundy with a sizzling chop savory piping hot spaghetti, or with whatever you're having for dinner. You'll agree that Roma wine deserves a regular place on your table. Get Roma wine tomorrow. For unvarying goodness at reasonable cost, insist on Roma, R-O-M-A, Roma wines, America's first choice. This is Claire Trevor. It's always one of the season's most stimulating experiences to have an appearance on suspense. Next Thursday, a young man who's been making a very rapid climb up the ladder to stardom will do a suspense play about a gangster who marries into money and murder. Dane Clark. Claire Trevor appeared through courtesy of RKO and will soon be seen in their production, Crack Up. Next Thursday, same time, Roma Wines will bring you Dane Clark as star of Suspense, radio's outstanding theater of thrills. Produced by William Spear for the Roma Wine Company of Fresno, California. Suspense is broadcast from coast to coast and to our men and women overseas by short wave and through the worldwide facilities of the Armed Forces Radio Service. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>